Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. Hope everyone had a great Christmas and looking forward to a good new year. Uh, before we dive into the video, I'm excited to announce Saturday, March 28th, 2015 is going to be the NYC CNC open house. So if you're interested in coming, that'll be the date. If you want to look up directions or the general area, the zip code is 437. Three, four. A lot more info to come on what exactly we're going to do and, and logistics and all that stuff. But I just wanted to throw the date out there and let anybody know. If you've got questions, feel free to email me, john at nyccnc.com. Looking forward to it though, folks. Okay, so today's part, it's another choose your own CNC adventure. This part came from Chris and he was a newer Sprout Cam user and he said, uh, it's not a part that he needs to design or use, but rather it's a part that he thought would really help him learn what he needs to do in Sprout Cam for the stuff he does want to machine. So we've got some whole ops, some 2D contouring, and then something I don't do a lot of is we've got some good 3D contouring, and we're gonna have some fun figuring out what the efficient way is on the water line and finish passes and so forth. So with that, let's dive into the Sprout Cam and then we'll machine around the Tormach. Okay, here's our part. Just to give you an idea on size, we're looking at two inches on the Y, and what you can see is the 2.1. 3.1 on the X, it's actually three inches, and I'll show you, I've got it uh, offset down 0.1 and over 0.1 to deal with some excess, excess stock on the work raw material we're going to use. And we're, we're down uh, about, yeah, 20 thou, and then it's um, 62 deep, so that's 0.6 inches tall in total. So, first things first, I already added a little note um, which is not, it's, it's not meant to be an operation, so I have it X'd out, but it's a note to myself as a reminder to hang this part off the side of the vise. And, what we'll, and we'll talk about that later, but we want to be able to mill all the way down on this left side so we don't want it centered in the vise. It's useful for finding our X0 when we flip the part. Okay, so first things first, we're going to want to use our roughing end mill with a roughing water line. So, roughing water line. I'm going to use my half inch corn cob, which is tool 11. That's all fine. I do that at 2800, and you can go pretty fast with that. We'll go 20. Don't need that because we're going to start in, don't need any lead in because we're going to start in outside of the geometry. And then we can leave all this alone. Let's see what we come up with. Um, usually I dry run this and come back and tweak it as necessary, and we'll see what we get. So. Click run there, and initially that looks good. Let's simulate it though. Okay, that's fine. Keep it still looks good. Clean up those. Now, oh, okay. So I don't, I don't like that. You saw it plunged into that part. I don't. Um, let's see if we can get look, take a look at that again. There we go. I don't want it to do that, and especially because it's actually, yeah, it hasn't even cleaned up the uh, all that material, and it's plunging into a, that pocket. And that's a good example of why roughing lot line is a great way to get some tool pass really quickly, but it's not always the most intelligent or most efficient. So let's get rid of that, and the easiest way we can do that is by selecting all these faces. Now again, I've talked about this before in my other videos, I don't always like using the mouse to click around. So, let's do this. Let's only select faces. Let's go to the front view. We can change it to a wire. You don't even really have to. Select, draw a little box like that. Now we'll go back to shaded view, and you can hold down control and deselect some things, but the truth is you don't really have to because what we'll do is we'll just choose restrict zone and and then I just jog through here and delete that's the one I want so I can delete the rest at once and I've got my restrict zone set rerun that and we should be able to take a look Looking good, let's see here, it was, yep, perfect. So it's cleaning up everything without plunging in, which is what I wanted to avoid. So I'm happy with that. Now, while I've got that tool in the machine, let's use it to clean up um, some of this curve here with a standard end mill before we go to a ball end mill. So I'm gonna do 
Uh, I think I'm going to do a finishing water line. Let's choose my same tool 11. Now, the real question is going to be what to do so on the on the parameters. So let's use our model to tab, select that line, click properties, and I can see that that line is as low as 0.18 really rounded. So let's go and choose bottom level 0.19. We'll go just a hit hair further. And we're going to want, and I know we're going to want to scallop it. And actually, let's turn that off and see if I can show you the difference between the two. Okay, so now here's the cool thing about roughing waterline. Because I've chosen the maximum depth as that 0.19, it only focuses on the model where it can find material that's between 0 and negative 0.19. Kind of cool, like it doesn't worry about any of the rest of this stuff. So it's an odd way of actually limiting what you're cutting. But that's not going to work. I wanted to trim a lot more of this. So um, let's say if we put the top as zero, does that change anything? Not really. My guess is that you could start increasing the depth of cut. And that may do it. It does. Um, in fact, that looks pretty good. Let's see what happens, though, if instead of that, we go back to a distance because we don't care the tool can cut as much as we can take out here. What we really care about is scalloping, which is a way of saying how far to step over. So let's change the scallop to 0 0.05 and see if that what that does for us. Okay, not enough to cut that in half. Okay, I like that. Um, couple things, I want it to actually go higher. So I guessing the way I can force that is put our retract plane at something like 0.2 and point, have a top level higher than that. Did that do it? No. Um, let's see here. Well, first off, before I forget, we don't want to be coming close to the final geometry. So we're going to put a radial 0.01 and axial 0.01. So it's leaving a width and on the side and a thickness on the bottom of 10 thou. Let's simulate that and just see what it looks like. Oh, you know, that's okay. Yeah, I thought it was gonna leave more at the top, but I forgot that we're already down a little bit below the surface. So that's great, that roughs that out. And so now what we can do is come in here. Actually, I'm gonna just copy, paste, and we'll do tool 200 as my just random tool, 0.375. And that'll be a spherical end mill, 5100. We'll use all the RPMs we got. 20 is fine. And, ooh, that reminds me to fix the lead in. Let's go do that right now. Forgot. I want to lead in so we're not coming close to plunging here. So we'll do a tangent. And it's really the lead in. The lead out or retraction isn't as important. And we'll do a distance, see what 150% looks like. Okay, we'll rapid simulate up to this, and then we will slow it down, start this, and take a look. Okay, we still are plunging in the material, which I, it'll work. It's a center cutting end mill, but I don't want to do it. So let's change it to a distance, and let's just be, uh, let's see what happens at 0.6 inches. Okay, that looks a lot better. Oh yeah, there we go. In fact, that's probably more than we need. We'll, we'll back it down to 0.5. 100% of the tool diameter. Perfect. Again, I'm not focused on every last little second of machining efficiency here, but rather just getting it made and, and keeping our tool life uh, preserved. So, okay, back to the finishing water line. Again, this is with our spherical ball end mill. What do I need to do here? So we want to turn off any extra stock, of course. We should be able to um, get rid of these. Now, the scallop, I know I'm going to want finer. This is effectively where you 
decide how rough the part is when you're done because we are cutting in a 3D pattern. So you're going to want something pretty fun. I'm going to start with a thousand and just see what you get. It's a trade off of tool time or machining time and finish. The other thing is I'm going to want to go lower. In fact, I want, um, what is that edge there? Is that the one? No, there we go. So we, we, we want to go um, probably down to about there. So let's, let's update our depth. Paste that in there. Okay, perfect. Uh, let's just simulate that and see what it looks like. I want to make sure I don't have too much chip load here. That's why we obviously roughed it in as well. Oops, of course I forgot to uh, simulate up to that, sorry. There we go, that looks better. And again, I don't do a ton of this, so um, we're gonna see how it goes. Um, obviously the programming I'm comfortable with, but uh, we'll see what the recipe really looks like once we get around the machine. Uh, it looks, certainly passes the smell test. One thing you'll notice is you've got that little tit left. So let's get rid of that thing. We'll duplicate this, copy, paste, and now a couple ways to get rid of it. I'll show you this way first. Feed speeds are fine, lead in's fine. Now on parameters, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a really shallow cut. So instead of going all the way to that bottom of, of the whole part, uh, we're just gonna cover, you know, basically what we wanna do is select via the height restrictions, just the top little part. So we're gonna say negative point uh, 02, 02. So let's look. So let's look, if we look at our simulation and look at our tool, we want it to be about, you know, 0.021 or so. There's no consequence of going too far. It's just gonna be a longer tool op. So we'll say 0.021. Top level we'll say is 0.01. Start a little bit higher than there, just see what we get. Now the scallop, well here, we'll click run and you'll see you just get one, one tool path and that's probably not gonna do us any good. So what you do is you just increase the scallop a lot. So we'll do one ten thousandth and we get a still little center ring, but let's see if it makes it better. Yep. That for all intents and purposes took it away. So that's great. Now. How long is that tool off actually gonna take? Nine seconds, no big deal. We already have the tool in there. Another way to get rid of it that's probably a little bit better, I do like that, this little, I like you know being tricky in cam, but another way to do it is to change the operation. We'll go to a finishing plane. We'll select the two faces and we'll put our tool in here. 200, 200, 375, spherical. We're not going to actually run this. Well, we could if we wanted to, but. Um, and I don't uh, see here. I don't think I've got to select. I don't have to select the levels um, like I did in the roughing because we've actually selected the faces. So if we click run, what do we get? Okay, perfect. So we get a 3D toolpath that's on those faces. Pretty cool. If we wanted, though, to have it be a um, finish style pass, you know, to give it a, you could actually do an intentional cross hatching or we wanted to smooth it out. We would do the same thing with a scallop. So let's see here, where is the scallop? Um, here we go, it's in a strategy now. And we'll again, we'll scallop it pretty small. We'll try, um, you know, half a thou, click run. And you get that path just like so. so now, why the heck am I getting uh, all this strange tool path? Oh, it's a roughing plane. I meant to do a finishing plane. Finishing plane. Okay, throw the settings in there.
and scallop it. Let's see what that looks like. Oops. It's like the faces. There we go. Faces, run. There we go. Look at that. Perfect. Render that. Exactly. So, again, if you wanted to do finer lines, just decrease the scallop size and you'll get finer lines. But it'll take a long time to machine. But that's okay. That's not uh, uncommon. You know, some of these uh, injection molds that are 3D contoured take a few days to machine, uh, of straight machining. So we're going to X that out because I'm not going to actually want to run that. So where are we? Let's make this guy and we'll do that as a roughing water line. Oops. I'm going to do tool 31. That's my quarter inch two flute end mill. And I'll run that at 5115. Now we want to spiral this in so that we are not plunging straight in. We'll do a, something like that for a radius and we'll, we'll take a look at that. And let's choose our top level, our bottom level. And now let's see what that actually gives us. My guess is we'll get some machining out here as well. Yeah, exactly. That's odd. It's only one pocket, but nevertheless, we want to restrict it to that pocket here so we can do the same trick choose the job zone, click through these errors there, and then I like to find the one I want, which is that guy, and then I, oops, I deleted the um, operation with the keyboard goof, so fix that here. Roughing waterline, let's select it first this time. Job zone. Okay, find the one. It's that one right there. So now select the first one, shift, last one, hit delete, and we're left with that. Select our top level, our bottom level. And now I'll go put my tool back in. 31, 31.25, 5115, spiral at 0.08, and we'll do a finish pass, 0 0.015 thousandths. Let's see what that looks like. How deep is that, by the way? Where top is 32 and that's 38, oh, that's fine. I can do that in one pass, no problem. Let's take a look at that. So here we get our spiral, that's the radius cut in. And, and then the cleanup, like so. Perfect. Okay, so where are we? Let's just do a quick re-render through the whole thing. Okay, so when we machined around the some of these surfaces, we were doing it with a roughing end mill. And let's actually just double check to make sure I had... Ooh, that's a good catch. You need to put some radial stock. It's a corn cob end mill and it leaves uh, obviously a textured surface. So now let's take a look at that again and we should see, perfect. We need to clean up these four side pockets and then we actually need to clean up the profile of this part and then the whole part as well. So let's go back through some 2D contours. New finishing 2D contouring. Same tool 31. 5,100, 20, and we'll handle this by bottom level, top level. Now let's only select curves like so, and if we hover, we should be able to double click. Okay. Now, I'm, I know I'm going to want to put some lead in because I don't want to come in right on the edge. So we'll drag our lead in out and then I'll put a little bit of a curve on it, like so. Actually, it doesn't need to be that much. I want it to be a gentle curve. There we go. Okay. 
run that and let's see if we get a nice cleanup like I'm hoping we do. Perfect. Okay, now we'll do the same thing or we're gonna copy, paste, and we can delete everything. And then we will choose, we wanna go around this part. And the cool thing is you can choose a 3D tool path like that, click curve, and it'll create a flat 2D curve. This is our bottom level. Now I'll show you a, a trick, and uh, I'm curious, some may, may disagree with this, some may not, but if that's negative 0.32, I'm actually gonna delete the bottom level or override it by going into bottom level. Instead of putting 0.32, I'm gonna back off that something like half a thou. So I'm gonna put 3195. The reason is that I don't want the end mill, actually we can do that in one pass. I don't want to create a uh, tool path with the face of the tool along the bottom of this part. I only want it to be cutting the side. So again, the side, not the bottom. And so having that half a tenth um, above, or half a thou rather, above the face here, it's not gonna hurt anything, for this, especially for this part, and it should, knock on wood, um, look nice. So let's see here, run that. And we'll probably need to create a lead in as well, no big deal. Perfect. Just to fix that lead in. And we'll start that over here. Reset, run, perfect. 